Hello and welcome to the Florida Cable Telecommunications Association's Capital Dateline. I'm Brad Swanson, your host. I'm here with the News Service of Florida's Jim Saunders, their executive editor. Jim, how you doing? Good, good. good. All right, well, we've got some big things happening in Tallahassee today. We've got uh, workers' comp. So big indeed that they had to move the uh, room from a small Senate room to the big not room, which means everybody's in town for this big one. What's going on? Well, this is going to be a huge, it's already a huge issue, and it's going to be a big issue for the next probably at least eight months. <laughs> um, there's a, a proposal to raise workers' compensation insurance rates for businesses and other employers by 19.6%. That's a lot. And uh, this relates to a, a, primarily to a Supreme Court decision this, uh, this spring in which uh, the Florida Supreme Court ruled unconstitutional some limits on attorney's fees in workers' compensation cases. Uh, that led to uh, uh, this proposal to raise rates. Uh, Florida businesses have had uh, lower rates for the last, ever since 2003. Uh, there was a major overhaul of the workers' compensation law right. system at that point, right. which drove down rates considerably. They say like 60%. Right. Uh, right, by putting in caps for the damages. There are a lot of moving parts in the workers' comp system, right. but one of the biggest issues has always been attorney's fees uh, that are paid to attorneys who represent injured workers. Right. And that's what this issue is about. Uh, so there is a proposal to raise the rates 19.6%. There's a hearing, has been a hearing going on as we speak uh, at the Capitol, as you alluded to. Uh, pretty much all the dogs in town are at that one. Right. I mean, it's, right. uh, it's, this is a big money issue. Uh, it affects a lot of people. It affects not only the trial or you know the, the lawyers who are involved on on the on behalf of injured workers and businesses, but there's a lot of other people interested in this right. issue: right. hospitals, doctors, uh, chiropractors, you know, right. labor unions. There's a lot of parties that get interested in this issue when it comes up. Well, what arguments are they are each side making? Well, um, the business side has made arguments pretty consistently over the years that that. Uh, attorney's fees drive up the cost of, of, of work, the workers' comp system. Right. They are saying that if a 19.6% increase is approved, which is still up in the air. I right. mean, the regulators still have to look at this. Right. But the business community is saying that this could, you know, for instance, a small small employer may not be able to a job hire an extra person if they have to pay, a, a, right. you know, that much of a net premium Serious increase. Serious burden to small um, business. You know, the, the, the plaintiff's attorneys and the unions have always argued that these uh, attorney fee limits that, that were placed into law were draconian, and they right. essentially have prevented uh, injured workers from being able to get legal representation to fight insurers over claims. Right, right. So um, that's part of the argument on their side of the of the of the of of the uh, of the debate. Right. The other, another thing is that uh, you know there's argument made today that uh, uh, that this 15 percent. Uh, impact is just inflated. That right. that it really isn't that the much. The nineteen percent. This is the fifteen percent. The fifteen percent. Fifteen percent relates of the nineteen point six relates specifically to the attorney's fees right. issue, right. and they're saying that uh, you know that's an inflated number. That the impact right. of that Supreme Court opinion really won't be that high. Right. Um, this is going to play out uh, with the Office of Insurance Regulation, which will make a decision. If these rates go into effect as proposed, they, it right. would go into effect on October 1st. Right. So things are coming fast. Right. And uh, this is going to be a big decision to watch. I think we can expect some rate increase. Right. Now, whether it will be 19.6%, uh, I think it's too soon to tell at this point. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, when you look at you know, how the business community versus how the plaintiff's attorneys argue these cases, you know, business community says Florida is, you know, 47th worst for cases, while the plaintiff's attorneys will say we're the third best for plaintiffs in the state. Well, and that isn't really the argument at this point, but it right. certainly was in 2003 when they, when, to it, when, right. when they passed this overhaul, was that there was arguments made by the business community that Florida had either the highest workers' comp rates in the country or the second highest. Right. And that was the justification for passing this. It was a massive package. Right. And um, so, uh, you know, that's sort of the backdrop that's being conjured up again right. a lot right. during they're, this they're debate. Going, they're going back to the original arguments, if you will. Right. So the next step uh, for workers' comp is unknown. What are you hearing? What are you seeing for what happens next? Well, after this, these, uh, after the Office of Insurance Regulations makes a decision about this, this rate proposal, mm -hmm. the next step in this is going to be a legislative 
brawl, really. I mean, this is going to be a big issue during the 2017 legislative session. Mm -hmm. Business groups are already lining up to try to get the legislature to pass something that will either cut into this rate increase or prevent future rate increases. And this is going to be, I mean, the trial uh, bar is also going to line up big time to fight against the business community. Right. And there'll be a lot of other groups involved in it, too. It's really a little bit early to know what may be proposed. We haven't seen anything right. uh, real hard and fast. And the other complexity of this, I think, is that the Supreme Court opinion dealt with a constitutional issue. They declared unconstitutional the fee limits right. that had been approved before. So that adds sort of an extra legal burden. It makes it harder to fix right. when it's a constitutional issue. So this so is going to be... might be, we might only have a constitutional amendment solution, or it might be a combination. We just don't know. I, I don't know at this point. Okay. I mean, there just have not been things thrown on the table at this point, but we, right. we know that there are going to be, and uh, which will probably lead to further litigation if something right. passes in the legislature. Well, you know, we're going to come back to News Service of Florida's crystal ball probably, <laughs> you know, in the future on this item. Okay, so moving on to the next topic that is on everyone's television. Uh, at the federal level, at least, it's the presidential election. But in the state of Florida, there are some hot races happening right now. Uh, why don't we break it down? Why don't we start with some Republican races and then go to the Democrat races? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, I think the Senate races are, are state right. Senate races are, are pretty, pretty interesting this year. Right. Part of that's related to redistricting. Uh, you know, all 40 Senate seats are up for election this year, and uh, the districts have been redrawn, which is, which has kind of created a, a, a scurry, if you will, in a lot of areas of the state. Uh, Republican side. Here's a couple examples. Down uh, District 17, which is down in Brevard and Indian right. River counties. Maybe the hottest race out there. I, I don't know. It's hard to judge. But uh, State Representative Debbie Mayfield and State Representative Rich Workman are in a Republican primary down right. there. There's all kinds of outside money flying into that race. All sorts of charges back and forth between the two of them. Right. It's gotten really nasty. Yeah. Uh, the winner of that is going to uh, probably, I mean, there is a Democratic candidate in that race, right. but that's a very Republican area. Right. The winner of that primary will probably be the next senator from that area. Right. And there, so there's high stakes in that. Similarly, out in the panhandle, uh, District 1, which uh, has Doug Broxson and Mike Hill, two state representatives, right. they're going for this seat that, uh, it's a seat that opened up because uh, Senator Greg Evers is running for Congress. Right. This thing's gotten nasty out there. They started out, you know, saying they're going to have a civil campaign and right. everything. And there's uh, all kinds of ads and attacks going on. Uh, again, the winner of that primary is going to be the next senator. That right. is one of the most conservative areas of the state. Right, so it's a battle of who's the most conservative and in, in, in what area. Well, right? the thing is, in that race particularly, their positions on issues don't really differ very much. Right. The issue is, you know, the, all these personal attacks that are going around the edges, and you've got outside groups coming in, right. uh, running ads, sending out mailers. It's so... Uh, the issues themselves are not that much different. Right. It, it becomes almost a personality right. contest. Right. At the, at it's a personal point. battle, just like in Bar Brevard as right, well. So, right. Okay. And then, and then our next uh, uh, race is also down in S the Sarasota area. Yes. Or, uh, you want to do Tampa? Let's do Tampa. Well, we could if we want to stay on Republicans. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Is uh, in Sarasota County, Nancy Dieter, the longtime senator down there, right. decided not to run for re-election. Uh, that has created a. a a vacuum. <laughs> a vacuum that a lot of people are trying to fill. Right. You got uh, two current state representatives, Greg Stubbe and Doug Holder. I think they are viewed as sort of the favorites maybe at right. this point, at least uh, among the people who are fighting. Those two are going at it like crazy. Right. Uh, also in that race is Representative Ray Pilon. Right. Uh, also in the race is the Sarasota, former Sarasota County Commissioner Nora Patterson, right. who has support from a lot of the, right. uh, a, a lot of, you know, uh, a tr establishment folks down in the Sarasota right. area. So um, you've got four pretty strong candidates in that race. Right. Uh, again, it's probably a Republican hold whoever emerges from this primary. But uh, particularly between Stubbe and Holder, right. uh, there's been a, a, a lot of back and forth. It's a bigger fight, but that's also where all the money is. Well, it is. And there's outside groups uh, coming in. Uh, some business groups are, are supporting Holder. Right. The NRA is supporting Stubbe. Right. Uh, and, you know, when you've got these guys who've been in office, everybody knows them down there. The, the district is relatively compact, too. It's right. Sarasota County, a little bit of Charlotte County, or some of Charlotte County. So it's not like one of these spread out districts. Right. The people down there 
know these guys, or no, right. and, and, and Patterson. It, it's a family and, affair. And it's a sure. family affair yeah. in that yeah. district. So let's switch to the Democrat Party and let's go a little bit north in Tampa. What's going on? Tampa St. Pete, really. What's going One on in that race? One of the most fascinating races, to me at least, is uh, Senate District 19, which is, uh, it's, uh, it's a district that includes parts of uh, Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. And it, it uh, has been a minority access district for a long time. Uh, Arthenia Joyner, the Senate minority leader, is from there, but she's term limited this year. So um, she can't run. And there are three, uh, well, three well-known uh, state reps, yeah. state reps yeah. well, two current, one former. Correct. Uh, state Representative Ed Nirain from yeah. Tampa, uh, State Representative uh, Daryl Rousson from St. Petersburg, and former Representative Betty Reed from Tampa. Right. Uh, all of them are African American, and the the thought was that that, that would be an African American hold. Right. But in, in June, uh, a very wealthy trial attorney named Augie Ribeiro got into that race. He's yeah. from St. Petersburg. He's put a lot of money into that race, right. and uh, there is uh, you know at this point uh, it's it's sort of unclear who's who's the front runner in that race. Right. I think. Uh, and, you know, and the hypothesis is that that the African American community will split. There is there is talk that the African American community could split between uh, uh, Narain, Reed, and Rusan, which would help Ribeiro mm -hmm. uh, make him. You know, yeah. he could fill that vacuum. Right. So right. Um, I don't Brand know about dynamics. his. I don't know about his name ID down there, but he's already put a few hundred thousand dollars into the race, which right. can quickly bump up your name ID, especially Absolutely. especially when the race is fractured like that. Yeah. What other Democrat races should uh, folks be paying attention well, to? Well, one other interesting one, I think, is down in uh, Broward County. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Farmer, who's uh, a, a very prominent uh, trial attorney, uh, is running for, it's an open seat, uh, and he is running for it. Uh, and he is running against uh, former Representative Jim Waldman, and uh, current representative Gwen Clark Reed, and this is a Senate seat. And uh, uh, you know, Waldman has gotten support from the business community down, uh, in in this race, uh, going against uh, going against Farmer, who's obviously got a lot of support from trial attorneys. Mm. So it's a big money race, and again, it's one of these races where the primary is going to decide it. This is this is true blue Democratic country. Right. I mean, Broward County, and uh, so. This is another one I think to watch on uh, on the thirtieth, the primary night, because uh, whoever emerges from that's going to have the seat. Right. Yeah, well, I tell you what, there's a lot of activity on the Democratic side and the Republican side at the state level versus what we all see typically at the uh, national level. So uh, we'll stay tuned next week, uh, or maybe in a few weeks, we'll we'll cover the House races uh, for the Democrats and the Republicans in the state of Florida. We look Great. forward to doing that with you. Thank you. That's all we have for today's program. Uh, thanks to Jim Saunders with the News Service of Florida. To stay tuned for news and politics and everything that's current that's coming up, go to the Advances section on our CapitalDatelineOnline.com website. Thank you very much for tuning in.